Welcome to KYD. This is the first of a few videos where we're gonna be upgrading the truck and the trailer in preparation for our trip to Alaska. Today, we're focusing on the trailer and we're headed down to Cliffs Welding so we can upgrade the suspension to the SRE 4000. That's upgrade number one. Upgrade number two is, you know I like two spares and I think it's essential for Alaska. And the question is, where are we gonna put this second spare, the spare spare? So for that, we have the BAL high to spare that we're gonna mount up underneath. We're also going to weld the leaf spring hangers into a little box, the same thing we did on Ginger 1.0 in Mexico. And then lastly, we're going to change all the bearings on the rig. So let's jump on down to Cliffs Welding and get started. Okay, we're underway. First thing is when they threw it up here, I thought it was pretty clever. They ended up putting the nose down of the trailer really low. Jack stands back here on the frame, and then when they lift the front end, the wheels came off the ground. So first it was to pull those tires off, and then pull the uh, current equalizer. The hardware actually looked pretty good, so Grand Design has some decent hardware that came with the rig I was happy about. So wet bolt. Okay, so right now the, there's a support beam, kind of like a bar that goes across and it connects to the center equalizer hanger. By the way, this is not a official install video. I'm just kind of like sharing some of the installation process. It's actually a pretty simple install. I think the key to this situation is the two jacks underneath each axle, and that way you can raise or lower the axle so that you can get the equalizer in the right position without the trailer being up on the frame and the two jacks being underneath the axles, this would be a very difficult job. But with the right tools, it goes pretty smooth. All right, let's talk bearings real quick. We pulled off the bearings and it turns out one of them was just a little brown. When I say brown, it means that they start getting hot and it starts to discolor the actual bearing. So, so just for the color? brown it is? Oh, yeah, I see. you can't wipe that color off. It's just actually, it'll actually burn into the metal. I was on the fence. Are we gonna go US bearings? They're a lot more expensive. Or are we just gonna go the Chinese stuff? Uh, Scott ended up finding a place between bearing belt and chain where they had some uh, US made bearings on there for this rig. So Trish went to go pick them up. They're about three times more expensive. And the reason I did it is I just don't want to have to think about it. We're going to Alaska. One of them have plenty of grease, US made. You know, last thing I need is a bearing problem. And then remember this is the day I tried to save like some money on bearings. So anyway, Trish is gonna go get those and they're gonna pull off the rest of the bearings. We still need to add the height of spare. So we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna weld we're gonna weld these leaf spring hangers right here. So we're just gonna put a back cap on that right there, like we did in Mexico. And we're gonna add a front cap to that leaf spring hanger. And we're not gonna to touch the middle one because the Moride SRE 4000 came with a bar that connects the two leaf spring hangers. And that added the rigidity that you need. So I'm not gonna worry about that. Who showed up with the bearings? I, bearing girl? Yeah, just call me bearing girl, supplier. Yeah. Are you bearing bearings? I'm bearing gifts. Bearing gifts. You see the pun there? Did you get it? Oh, they saw it. Okay, cool. Check so. It Here we go. And there's a big package. Yeah, that's like perfect. Okay, 
Okay, so I really couldn't be happier with the way that the bearings were handled on this. We ended up going with the US parts, which is great, but just the way it was done. Well, I've been pretty fortunate to come across a couple good shops. Uh, Taps Auto out in uh, Paso Robles. That was a great shot. That's where we corrected our Firestone issue. And of course, Cliffs Welding here in Phoenix. So if you're going through here, you need to get your work done, maintenance, uh, bearings, repack your bearings. There was even a Jeep in here getting the tow bars hooked up, so Class A can tug it, so these guys know what they're doing. And I'll tell you something pretty interesting. Remember when I got my Firestone installed incorrectly in Maine? I asked those guys if I could record, and they said, no, no, we don't have the insurance for you to record, blah, blah, blah. Well, they did it wrong. So there's a lot to be said that Scott's like, yeah, record all they want, because he's doing it right. Jake, if he thought that this was a little bit overkill, if it was really necessary, I mean, how many leaf spring hanger failures does he see? And he laughed and said, yeah, she sees quite a, uh, quite a few. So, you know, apparently when you, when you turn these rigs on sharp turns, it's gonna put a lot of pressure on that leaf spring hanger right there, and it doesn't take much to get that thing to like twist and mess up. So now they'll be reinforcing the front, the back, and like I said, we're not, we're, I'm gonna leave the middle one alone because it, just the Moride crossbar is providing the rigidity that I think is necessary. I make sure there ain't no like gas lines or water lines or tank behind here so I don't screw into it. Some companies, you know, they'll run that stuff directly like on the other side of the I-beam like right in here. Yeah. So we kind of want to make sure it's not in there. Most of the stuff's all, pretty much all that way. It's really bare under there, it's not nothing, so. Okay, like I was saying, the, of the importance of a walk around. You're, all right, just leaving Cliff's Welding. Those guys are really good. They know what they're doing. Yeah. Now, I know the question is going to get, okay, so how does it ride? Can you tell the difference? You know, I don't know. I guess when we go over some speed bumps, we can Yeah, I think it. you'll know when you take sharp turns and when you go over some rough road. And yeah. then maybe even it just like what you said, a speed bump. Yeah. So, and then I think the other thing I got to do is put a GoPro under there so that we can actually see it move in action. Okay, so we're not only improving the comfort of the exterior of Grand Ginger, but also the interior. Very excited what's inside here. But not for us, more for like Tori and the boys. Yeah. Right? Well, Tori, Caleb is letting Tori break it in. Yes. Because Victoria is leaving in two weeks. So mm -hmm. she's really only on this mattress for two weeks before yes. she goes off to college. Yes. Regarding the mattresses, the current mattresses are not very good. And the kids are constantly complaining about them. And Trish and I learned one thing, you can really improve your RV life experience, your trips, even weekend or full time by making it more comfortable for everybody. Yes. Well, and that doesn't just go for mattresses. It goes yeah. for all the little things that you like at home. If you have one person in your party that doesn't really like RVing, make sure they have all the comforts so yeah. that they want to come back. There's one brand that just kept coming up and that was Mattress Insider. And the reason is because you can get any dimension you want. It is completely custom and not a lot more expensive right. for that. So these are five inch gel top memory foam mattresses to the custom specifications. So let's get these inside the rig.
you see how it's this this is all there is I yeah, can pinch and feel not, my fingers it's just not much and then underneath here is just a piece of wood yeah it's already coming puffing out it's like oh, a really? biscuit jar a biscuit jar uh-oh oh you're gonna Man, it fits perfect, doesn't it? It really does. Well, well, when you give the exact measurements. Yeah. I guess that's what happens. Well, that was the hardest part is because we couldn't find anything this size on Amazon. That's right. We just thought, oh, well, we'll just go on Amazon and order a bed. It didn't work out. No, and I'll tell you what, this was no more expensive than what we previously bought on Amazon, mm -hmm. where we did have the right dimensions. This mattress was $3.99. Tori's input on the mattress, see how it is. Knock, knock, knock. Hello. Hello. All right, well, Welcome. what's the good word? Oh, you want me to come in? Yes. All right, let's come in, let's come in. What's the uh, What's the good word on the mattress? I love my mattress. Really, do you? Yes. Yes? Where are you going? Where are you going? We're having a I'm conversation. I'm going to bed <laughs> on my nice new mattress. You like it? I love it. Really? Yes, like really. The old one? And well, the old one, you couldn't even see. It no, the literally old was... was like that big and it was yeah. hard. How does it compare to your mattress at home? We always put, we always put home in quotes. At home. Yeah. <laughs> My mattress at home was, I can't really say it was better than this. This is awesome. And what's Carson say about it? You talk to him about it? Um, Carson likes it. He likes it a lot. We both have, aren't used to this portion of the yeah. lift, so we hit our heads. Make sure when you do the measurements, like the five inch, that you keep in mind how, what the ceiling is. They have an eight inch version of this This is that's even better, but had we done eight inches, I think it would have been too tight on the top. Also, those blinds over there, there's little things that hold the blinds together, so you wanna measure up to that, things that protrude. Like for instance, let me show you. On Carson's mattress right here, I can't get the emergency window out now. I know that's a problem, I'm gonna fix it. But you know how it has that little latch that goes like this? I elected to get Carson the five inch mattress and change the way that that window opens, but that's just something to keep in mind. So now I'm just gonna, instead of that latch swinging out, I'm gonna get a different type of clasp so we can just unhook it and open the window because Carson actually likes to have his window open quite a bit. So if you have an RV or even a boat, anything with a custom size, we've loved working with Mattress Insider, so there's a link down in the description to go check it out. I wake up in the morning and my back doesn't hurt anymore. Yes, yes, all right, so uh, this could be the last Mark and Tori's tips for a while, because Tori's well, going off to school. For six months. But what's your one tip, Tori, mm -hmm. to sharing a room with siblings? Don't share a room with your siblings. All right, do you remember when we were in Lee's Ferry and our hot water heater didn't turn on when we were dry camping? Well, we figured out the problem. A lot of people ask, let us know what the problem was because we'd love to circle back and when, once you get that figured out. Well, we figured it out. There's the circuit board on the water heater, and when I reached out to Grand Design, they gave me a list of uh, RV repair companies that were mobile, because I didn't want to drop it off anywhere, and blue they recommended Blue Agave Mobile RV Service. I called up Tim, he was here within a few days, and now he's here to replace the circuit boards. So let's check it out. Tested, I can show you how easy it is. Mm -hmm. You would ground it. And with the power on, you're gonna have power coming in off of this brown wire. Yeah. So your power from the switch comes in from the wire through what they call a thermal fuse. Mm -hmm. From this thermal fuse back through your thermostat. This is what controls the temperature behind this foam, what tells the water heater to come on. Comes out of here, goes back to the circuit board. When you flip the switch on, all you're telling it to do is, all right, we want gas. Once you do that, it's gonna send power down here. Once you send power down here, it's gonna send spark off of this wire and power from the circuit board to open this gas valve. Once it lights, it's supposed to sense the flame burning on this wire. If it doesn't sense it, this is what fails. That's it. There is also a fuse here, which can go bad. Okay. Most people don't know that, but I just oh. like to point that out. Yeah. Turn it on. The board is put on, so let's fire up that gas and see if it lights. Ooh. All right, there we go. Yep. Uh, Tim, Tim, right? Tim, okay. Blue Agave, mobile RV repair out here in Phoenix. Came recommended from Grand Design. I'll take care of you as much as I can. Yeah, no, you've been great to work with. All right, that's it. First upgrade video is done. And we, we've been pulling around the trailer for just a little bit and everything seems to be working great. The only thing we have to do now is pop back on over to Discount Tire and get our spare spare so that we can mount it down on that hide a spare thing 
and we're on our way. So we got a few more videos to come. We still have the solar upgrades to do plus the truck upgrades so you can expect that. And then if you're new here, hit that subscribe button because we are off to Alaska for season five with a new video every Sunday. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and we'll catch you next weekend.